Hi everyone, welcome to the Wool and Spinning Podcast. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is July 29th and this is episode 30. I have a few housekeeping things that I need to cover really quickly and so I'm going to do that now and then I've got some spins in progress and some knitting in progress to chat with you about. To those who are new viewers, thank you so much for checking out the weekly vlog and for those returning, thank you so much for sticking with me. Tour de Fleece is over, I just can't believe it's over <laughs> and um, it was a whirlwind of spinning and chatting about spinning. The photos that were shared in the Ravelry thread as well as on the Slack channel were just unbelievable. For those who were using the Slack channel throughout Tour de Fleece, please note that if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you will be taken off the list as of August 1st. And for those who would like to continue taking advantage of the Slack um, capabilities and being um, part of that, um, you just need to head over to patreon.com slash wellforpearls. We have some winners to announce for Tour de Fleece. Some of the prize donations were generously donated by uh, Rebecca, who is part of our community, and she was my co-captain for the tour. Thank you so much to Rebecca for these um, prizes. And I donated a pattern, as did Rachel, of Knit and Love. And I think I will just tell you who won. Um, for the first, for Rachel's pattern, it was her pipe fine shawlette pattern. She had knit one in her own hand spun. It is her own pattern. It's really quite uh, beautiful. I had a look at it the other night and I think I actually might knit it myself. This is going to Miriam, who is Miriam924 on Ravelry. Congratulations, Miriam. My wraps per inch toque that I published um, about I don't know, nine months ago-ish, we'll be going to Laura, who is Laura Sue on Ravelry. Congratulations, Laura. And da-da-da-da, for the fiber, um, Becca um, donated a merino silk blend and three different bundles of BFL in various shades, natural shades. So for somebody who's really into dyeing, I can see some dyeing in your future. So the Merino Silk Blend is going to Vicky Knitwit Vic. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> and um, the three bumps of BFL that Becca donated are going to, in no particular order, Charlene, who is Kindred Bliss on Ravelry, Candy, who is Handy Candy on Ravelry, and Kim, who is Kim Buck 2 on Ravelry. Of those people, Kim, I need your address. If you could please send that to me, I'd really appreciate it. And congratulations to everybody who won. Tour de Fleece was such a whirlwind, and we've got the Olympics coming up. So if anybody would like to join in for the Ravelenics and spin their way through some stashed fiber, I know me and um, my friend Katrina, um, who is Crafty Jacks or Kalem One on Ravelry. She's Crafty Jacks on Instagram. Her and I have been um, wanting to get through some of our deep stash. So if you guys want to do that um, through the Olympics, I will set up a thread in the Ravelry group. Just let me know if that's something that would interest you. Um, I have a little bit more housekeeping to cover. That is that. The first series of workshops is going to close on August 1st for anybody who would like to join. So this is a three-part mini-series series through patreon.com slash wellforpearls. This first series is going to be on sampling and spinning for a larger project. If you have any questions about what this might look like and how I'm facilitating this through the online environment, please get in touch with me ASAP and I will try to answer your questions as best I can. Um, to those who've already signed up, I will be getting a Slack channel together and we will start chatting it up after you receive your first PDF download and your homework is attached and you'll have the whole month to work through it. And then you'll get another PDF September 1st. We'll, with some homework, we'll work through it. And same thing in October. In October, um, that particular Patreon tier will open again for strategic entry and people who would like to participate in series number two, um, which is going to be on default yarn, will be able to sign up and that will be another three-part series. So watch for that in October. But in the meantime, series one for sampling is open until August 1st. 
For anything around Fiber Club essays, um, I've called that the Thoughtful Writer um, and workshops. You can do a combo spin of all three. You can sign up for just essays. You can sign up for just Fiber Club. If you're interested in any of that stuff, I really encourage you to head over to patreon.com. If the content that is being created here is, is stuff that is meaningful for you and you're finding a lot of value in it, um, even just a dollar a month helps to continue to create what we're doing over here. So thank you to those who are supporting the show. I really appreciate it. Um, when we hit 500 subscribe, uh, $500 a month, I will be giving out based on nominations from the community, um, a spinning wheel and more on that coming later in the show. So what am I working on? I have a ton happening. We also just launched Breed Studies, so I am gonna talk about that a little bit. One of the things that I've been working on, and you guys are gonna laugh, I have been trying to clear off my bobbins. So this is actually a sample of yarn that is just bobbin clearing. That's all it was. And it is so pretty. <laughs> I'm really quite, um, I, I'm quite in love. I really want to do a memory squares blanket or a mitered squares blanket or something um, that might be showcasing some of these little sample skeins of yarn that I have been um, spinning up that are bobbin enders, sampling, stuff that I'm never really going to use that's sort of just sitting in a big huge huge um, Ziploc bag upstairs and um, I'm thinking the mitered squares, but not picking it up as I knit. I might just seam it at the end. I've also been thinking about um, the hexi puffs blanket. I've been thinking about a modular blanket, which I talked about last time. I'm just really torn and I want to do something and I just don't know what. So this is another skein for that blanket, whatever it ends up being. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to knit with this. It's just so pretty. <laughs> So that is um, something that I've been just trying to get my bobbins clear. I put in some time on my hand spun Falkland cardigan. Again, I'm in the middle of a row, so I'm really sorry, but I'll hold it up and you can see what it looks like because this is a better setup for me to be able to show you what stuff looks like sort of in progress. The office is chocker block full of containers for shipping for the breed study, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So that's why I'm um, recording in a slightly new setup. So this is the back of the cardigan. And this is the um, tool stitch up close. And um, because I'm in the middle of a row down here, I can't really show you, but this is actually the front of the cardigan. doesn't help that my needles are all twisted around each other. So this is what the front of the cardigan looks like. And the tool stitch actually wraps around coming around the front. And I did that intentionally to create kind of a, a bit of an hourglass shape. And I'm going to seam, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I might seam a button band on that'll be like a shawl collar or I might pick up and knit a shawl collar. But either way, I'm sort of envisioning a, a shawl collar at this point uh, for this cardigan. I have a lot of yarn and I wanna use it all up. So um, for those who are new to the show, this is that hand spun. It's a Tweety Falkland. And it's actually not actually brown, if you can believe it. So this yarn is a combination. It's it was carded, hand carded up on a on a drum carter um, by a local fiber, fiber artist, and there's actually no brown in it. It's red, yellow, blues, greens, um, purples, all these different colors to create what the optical mixing that is needed. Can you see that there? I'm a little bit too far from the camera this way, but I really um, wanted to try a different setup. So that is um, the colors there. So you see that yellow and there's some red. Um, so there's actually no brown, but because your eye mixes all those colors together and creates um, 
from a distance a brown color when you look at it up close it's really textured and has um, quite, a, quite a lot of depth and character to it I really didn't enjoy spinning this yarn I've talked about that extensively on the show but I am really enjoying knitting with it and this was my swatch and it's just got a lot of it's just very tweedy I really um, quite like it and because it's quite evenly spun it was a three ply so all of the inconsistencies of spinning long draw really evened out in the finished yarn um, I'm it's really quite pleasant to knit with so that's great all right sorry about the light it's kind of moving across right now and and um, I'm hoping it's not creating too much of a glare the other thing that I've been working on is my combo spin. This is Hello Yarn Lengthy, Do Fi Lengthy Fibers Do. And this was Ramboulet. And I bought this as part of a Completely Twisted and Arbitrary um, spin along. So Completely Twisted and Arbitrary is a group on Ravelry and they feature various um, indie dyers four times a year and in quarterly spins and I happened to be able to get in on the Hello Yarn spin. So what I did with this and for those of you again who've seen the show or you know and been with me recently you will know that I actually did um, some roving from my stash and I combo spun this so I held the roving together with the comb top and I matched some comb top that was already in my stash that was very close to the colors in the comb top. And I carded it all up and I added silken oil, pulled Sari Silk, um, Angelina Firestar, um, other colors, I added some yellow. Uh, what else did I add? I added a little bit of brown. Anyways, I finished my other bobbin. So my, my flyers and whorls came back from Shacked. Everything is working beautifully. I had amazing customer service from them. And um, these are my two bobbins. And they aren't plied. I finished these last week. And they aren't plied, as you can see. They're very textured and um, they really turned out beautifully. I'm, I'm just in love with what the bobbins look like. I haven't taken photos of them yet, but I just really love the colors. The reason why I haven't plied them yet is because um, I think I mentioned this last week. I'm officially a Spinolution dealer now, and I put in my first wholesale order with them because I wanted to get two demo wheels that I could take with me, um, wheels that I could have an offer an opportunity to people locally to try and play with and get a sense for what their wheels are like. I also really wanted a polywog for Nora and I'm going to put on one bobbin for her some commercial yarn that she can just sit and play with. And I bought the Mach 3 package deal that comes with the 16 ounce bobbin for plying or art yarn or sweater spins, whatever it is that you're looking for. So I thought that I would save this particular project and, and plying this particular project for playing with that wheel because it's supposed to come tomorrow night. So both wheels are supposed to be um, delivered tomorrow night. I'm so excited. So I'm hoping that um, Friday evening I can spend some time and I can ply that up and share with you next week my reflections on how it all went. So it's really exciting. The last thing that I was going to talk about tonight was breed studies. So the fiber came, as most of you know, who are participating in breed studies. This was unlocked when we hit uh, a milestone on the Patreon platform. And we launched it July 1st. And we decided as a group that we were going to spin Norwegian, Coopworth, and some baby llama for those who wanted to participate. So this is what the Norwegian looks like. Some of you are anxiously waiting for it in the mail. So for those who don't want spoilers and want to be surprised, um, look away. But this was the Norwegian, and it's just absolutely beautifully prepped. It's smooth and silky. There are it, This is a double-coated sheep, and there are some places where I can see that there is some of the outer coat, but for the most part, it's just absolutely beautifully prepped. This isn't necessarily a wool that some people would be able to wear next to their skin, but actually, I'm surprised at how soft this is 
unspun. And I think this is going to be one of those types of fibers that you're not going to want to put a lot of twist into because even just twisting it once, it's fiber locked. I, I can't pull it apart. I had to um, really make sure it was untwisted when I was dividing it up to put it into the bags for the 50 gram and 100 gram. And once when it's not twisted, it just drafts beautifully. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting into mine. I'm not sure if I'm going to spin it on my spindles. This is all I have uh, that was left over from making everybody's packages. Um, the other one is the Coopworth. It's very spongy. It's totally different from the Norwegian. And this is from a farm in just down in the US and it's just got a totally different feel to it. It's very spongy. And when I first saw it, I actually was a little bit disappointed because I was like, oh, oh it's got neps in it and it doesn't look very good. It's absolutely beautiful. And unfortunately it's back ordered. So we won't be able to get any just yet. Uh, hopefully it'll become available again soon. And again, it just drafts out beautifully. I think this would spin um, for a beginning spinner to, to break this down and spin it in sort of chunks like this. It, it'll just draft like a dream. I, I'm really excited to see the yarn that this makes. And I have an opportunity to get some light gray Coopworth locally. So I'm going to look into how much I can get of that. So that's really, really neat. And that's a new to me breed actually. So I'm excited to play with that. And then the last thing that we that I'm going to be playing with, and I only have this little bump of it left because after I made everybody's packages, this is all that was left, is the Baby Llama. And it's been dehaired just unbelievably. It's a creamy, taupey brown. I don't know how it'll take the dye. It's going to be really interesting to see what people do with it. Um, and again, it just drafts like a dream. Llama and alpaca, um, they are very slippery to spin and they often, especially alpaca, often gets combined with wool when it's carded. And um, I've always found, alpaca is one of my favorite things to spin and I've always found that with a little bit of wool content, it gives it a little bit of elasticity and it's really enjoyable to spin, even in roving form, because it almost kind of spins like comb top because it's so smooth, it just naturally smooths out. This is really slippery. And so I'm really gonna be interested uh, from the people who, who ended up with a little bit of this to hear from them what they what their experience is. And I'm wondering if it's gonna end up being spun by some over the fold. So hopefully we'll be able to get into that in the breed study forum and see what people sort of end up doing. If you have any of this stuff, um, any of these three breeds, and you would like to part participate in the breed studies, please don't hesitate. It's open to all. It just happened um, to be um, an offering from me for people to be able to participate. So please don't feel that because you didn't purchase fiber that you can't not participate. That's not the case at all. Please jump in in the Ravelry thread and join right in. So that is Norwegian, Coopworth, and Baby Llama. I think that is all for today. Oh, I wanted to show you the, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to show you the polywog. So for those who haven't seen it, um, this is the polywog spinning wheel. And um, it's just the cutest little wheel. So that's the polywog and you see the little teeny tiny treadles. And you can put an accelerator on it. And this is actually what I'm quite excited about for myself because without the accelerator, it the orifice and the wheel height sits lower. So for Nora, that's gonna be perfect. And then for me to be able to spin at it, you it adds, you'll see sticking out to the side above the drive wheel, there's um, a bunch of whirls that's the accelerator there isn't that neat and then the lazy kate sits above you maybe have seen these wheels on instagram they're really kind of out there right now um, and the other wheel that i ordered was the mach 3 and this is sort of their top of the line wheel it is interchangeable with their electric wheel which is their firefly and I actually bought a package 
as the demo so that I could get used to sort of what that is all about. And the middle bobbin is the one that my wheel is going to come with. So I'm really excited to play with that and see what it's like. I love the flower shape and the drive wheel. I think that's so cool. And the middle bobbin is the one that I ordered. I did not order the 32 ounce, which is the one that's on the far, on the opposite side of my pinky. Um, because I don't really do art yarn, but I do ply big projects. And I wanted to see what sort of the equivalent of a jumbo bobbin would be like on these wheels versus say my Lendrum and my Matchless. So I'm very excited to sort of play with those and see what um, reflections I have to share with you over the coming weeks and months. So that's it for this week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I actually am not working this weekend and I'm going to a local fiber festival that is down in White Rock, British Columbia. It's just um, along the ocean and I'm going to be meeting up with friends there. Kinfolk Yarn is going to be there as well as some other friends and um, unfortunately my friend Chrissy of the Snappy Stitches podcast won't be there. We were hoping to be able to meet up but not this time and uh, yeah it'll just be really nice to be able to go and hang out with other fiber folks. So have a wonderful weekend. Happy spinning. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.